Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about how you can use real world as your playground and how we can use real data to make experiences from gaming to other entertainment or even training. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Christina. Um, you can find me on Twitter if you have any questions after the um, presentation, or uh, you can always ask me here during the presentation or after the presentation. Uh, I'm Andrew at Maps GD, uh, a Google Developer Expert. Uh, I'm based in Oslo, uh, but I was born in uh, Russia. I'm an independent consultant for the last four years. Um, I'm mostly focusing on Android development, but I'm also a Unity developer. Uh, I really love uh, AR, augmented reality. I blog about it and uh, give talks about it. And one of the reasons I'm here today and talking about how you can use uh, data and make game experiences as uh, it is connected to augmented reality, it's connected to maps, it's connected to everything I'm excited about. So uh, let me start. Uh, I start, I first learned about maps and augmented reality when uh, I got my master thesis and it was in 2011. Back then Android just started and I got the first ever Samsung tablet and I had to do kind of Google Maps implementation on my own in OpenGL. Uh, I had the data and I had to do also augmented reality implementation as well. And it took me many months and it was just a MVP or demo concept. So I got very excited when Pokemon Go came around and the combination of augmented reality and maps uh, became very real and you could see that you can create very engaging experiences with the data we have, uh, the real data with the maps and make something that people get excited about. So today I'm going to talk about how we can create games like Pokemon Go or other experiences using Google Maps. Okay, my gifts are not, yes, here. So one of the games that are popular now, other than Pokemon Go, is Wizards Unite. And I also have to tell you, I have a lot of gifts because that's how I feel that visual concepts should be presented. Uh, I hope you don't experience a lot of lagging behind because of the connection. So Wizards Unite is the second uh, most uh, famous game that is built with Google Maps and is like Pokemon Go. The second one is Walking Dead is, uh, if I remember it correctly, is developed by a company in Finland. And it's also the same idea as Pokemon Go and Wizards Unite. You walk around in the city and you um, you follow the gameplay and you either kill someone, <laughs> it sounds funny of course, but uh, or you have to catch Pokemons and so on. So you have to do the missions. Uh, let's start a little bit with the history of how we are used to play and the gaming. Since the start of the gaming industry, we always try to try try to replicate the real world. Here is a screenshot and comparison with London that is like real on the right side and London replicated in Assassin's Creed. And of course, this replications 3D takes a lot of effort for game studios. It requires a lot of people uh, doing modeling, uh, 3D designers and so on. The second one is uh, New York uh, 
a grand station, also a replication for the game. And the third one is Chicago, is also from one of the games. Uh, as you can imagine, the indie and any indie studio would not be able to do this kind of work uh, because it's very time consuming and costly as well. So, and we also used to play like this, or we are still playing like this. We are sitting in front of the computers. But something uh, happened in 2016, something that changed a lot of, um, a lot for us and for games as well. So Pokemon Go came around and um, a lot of people started playing and it was a sensation because no one expected that. And Pokemon Go players went crazy and uh, you could see everyone is looking for this Pokemon that you have not caught yet. And just to remind you about the gameplay, as I said before, you walk around in the city, you have the map, like here. Uh, when you're walking by uh, the area, uh, Pokemon can pop up and then you have the possibility to catch it. And then you have a possibility to do AR and then you have to catch the Pokemon. And uh, the most maybe exciting for many people were that it, uh, the game got world, uh, Genius World Records. It got the highest revenue the first months. And some statistics about it is 57% uh, of people would play one to three hours daily. And that would, that would um, mean that um, non, non, not other app like this before had so much retention for the user. Uh, and also playing, 68% were playing by running errands, and also 54% were playing alone. The other interesting thing about this game is that it's very diverse. It's almost 50-50% women and men players. And of course, because of this success, there were many clones. Only in Norway, where I'm based, we had three clones, and I worked on one of the clones for Pokemon Go. It was, of course, the other business case, but the gameplay was the same. You use the map to find the treasure, and then you have AR gameplay. Um, can I, do you still hear me? Anyone? Yeah. Yes, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, so many clones, but, and the most challenging thing for this kind of game for us back then in 2017 was to know where we can place the games, where you can place, let's say, Pokemon. Is it safe? Is it on the road? Is it on the railroads? Is it uh, maybe close to the airport where you actually cannot walk in. That was the main challenge. And there was no API where we could use. So we used direction API and just tried to figure out, okay, where can we place our game? And of course, in many cases, it was not like the safest position. And of course, we maybe have seen in the news some of those that the Pokemon would come up into on the railways or this guy over here. Uh, well, I hope it was a joke, but uh, who knows? So that's how uh, Google Maps came out with gaming solution in 2018. It was, uh, let me show you the demo video. I don't know how well it will work for you. Uh, it's just a minute. Oh, sorry. It was.
There is no sound in the video. I, I can share the slides with you after the presentation if uh, people would want it. And you can see all the videos that uh, are attached to this uh, presentation. That would so, be better, definitely. Yes, yes. So you will be able to see it. Um, so the timeline, the platform for gaming from Google Maps was introduced in 2018 at um, Game Developer Conference. Uh, first games came in summer 2018, based on the platform. And the SDK that you can download today got available uh, this uh, last year, 2019. Uh, unfortunately, the launch of the product, now it's in beta, but launch of the product will probably be this year, but the, the, the time timeline is unknown but already today you can download the first sdk version and then test it out and see your the apis are open and you can see how you can use it and we will go through it in this presentation so the the most important two features of the platform is mission planning as i said it was really hard for us uh, like creating a copy of uh, Pokemon Go uh, to create missions, to see where we can place our games. And the other, world, uh, the other feature is world building. So let's start with mission planning. And that's the most crucial for many of the game developers and not only game developers, but also if you use this platform for any other experience like treasure hunt or anything else. So how can you know which position is good for you? If, you're, if you have a game that is, for example, should only have uh, generate like, let's say, Pokemons in the field or in the forest, let's say it was only the parks you want to have the games, how can you know that? And this platform can help you with it. Playable Location API. Uh, are offered by Google Maps platform. So playable locations are collections of curated and generated geographic points. You can set your own rules and filters, and we will go through all the rules and filters we, that are available. Uh, you, can, you will get safe places for a game to play, and also, you will receive the badges. And let's look at the architecture of your game or your platform. So we can see the client, that's mobile client, uh, that would have a game server and game database. And it's said that, so we will have to cache our playable locations on our game server the client should not talk directly to playable locations API. Like this, we can cache data and save money by not asking playable location all the time. And we can have, let's say, Pokemons, our Pokemons at the same location in one city. Uh, there is a playable location explorer that was made by the team where you can explore the possibilities of the platform. And this is only for, for demonstration for you to see what you can request and how many interest points or games you can generate in this location by your criteria. Um, so let's go through what you can actually have and what you can get. So let's say we want our games to be only in the parks. And we want the name, uh, the point, and the display name. Also here, we can say how many points we can get in, in this location. Um, the spacing between them in meters. Uh, and point type, what does it mean? Let's say if you're in the park, center means it will be generated somewhere in the center of the park. 
A snapped will mean that the location will be generated on the edges of the park. Uh, and then also access type, it's important maybe for you that it's free, acceptable, that it's not a private area. The other thing is also maybe important for you if it's busy or not. Some people would prefer a game where less busy locations. And here, uh, the type, we will say we want to include the park and we exclude everything else. And that's the request, how it will look like uh, that you will send from your uh, server to the playable location API. We, we send the filter and the places and what we are including or excluding. So here we are including the park, here we are excluding the park from the game objects. And of course, we can have different game objects. Let's say if you have a game that generate uh, gold in close to the banks, that would be one location uh, that will include ATMs maybe. And then you have the other one that will generate like uh, groceries, close to grocery stores. And then it means you have two types of game object. So the response would look like this, also depending on what you want in response, how much data you want to receive. Uh, so you get location, latitude and longitude, name, place ID, and so on. And you can also get the address if you require. Uh, also gen um, <clears throat> collected by types. So here is your game object one, uh, z uh, zero, uh, game object one. Uh, okay. And then the Google Maps platform is scalable, as you know. It works everywhere or almost everywhere. Uh, and it means that your game will be available everywhere in if there are parks in, uh, in Oslo, there will be games there. If there are parks in, let's say, Seoul, it will be games there. So it's scalable. When you do a game or uh, create a Pokemon Go for your city, it will also work in other cities across the world. So let's jump into the second feature. It's world building. And that's another one that's not much used, for example, at po uh, in Pokemon Go game or Wizards Unite, but I want to have a look at it with you. So um, this gaming platform is a Unity SDK. And that's what you get. Uh, this is New York. And when you open the sample app, that's the city you get generated. So you get all the architecture in New York City, and this is like Broadway. And of course, maybe not everyone wants to have the same look. And the platform is open for you to create your own design for the city. And inspired by Android logo, uh, that every uh, Android that be together, not the same, uh, you can be you can customize your map, your experience. So for example, here, uh, you can create London as the ancient city or space city or any design you, the best fits your game. So how can we uh, modify our game? First, you can simply change the material. If you want your city to be pink or purple, you just change the material and that's what you did. The second one, the more uh, advanced is the texture. And the texture is uh, based on nine slicing uh, technology or the algorithm that uh, commonly used in the gaming. And also in Android development, we use nine, pa uh, nine patch that's uh, the same the same so let me remind you about nine slicing scaling for textures if we would take uh talking about android development if we will take take a button and we will scale it here are the corners they will scale badly 
if we take a nine slicing uh, scaling texture, only two, five, and eight will get scale, and one, three, seven, and nine will stay the same. And here I added the textures to the sample. And here you have New York City with textures. And of course, all the textures uh, you can make pink or gray or purple or space inspired, anything you like. The next one you can do is prefab replacement. So what we get in the platform, we get several types of buildings that would be built on the map. What you can do is to replace types of buildings with your prefab or with your 3D model. And that will also be working everywhere. So let's say the type one building, if you want it to look like a spaceship, it will look like spaceship from Japan to New York to London, it will be the same. So what else can you modify? There are plenty of possibilities like road width, like parapets. Um, okay, the demo. Here is the sunset demo from uh, Unity sample. So you can also create different times and generate like night and day mode and so on. It's like a, your normal gaming platform, but what you have already pre-built is the city so you can create on top of it so what i want to say is the only limit is your imagination and you can create anything you want and i have two videos of two demos how two different companies use this platform and of course i will share with you as well but let me just play it see if it works and it doesn't have a sound so here you have um, Paris, and this gaming studio just used Paris to create a car racing game. And you see they made a wonderful style, like uh, whitish, like snowy style of the game. It looks fantastic. And this one is very, someone had very good imagination. So it's a Tokyo city and you can just clean up the city from all the buildings they have. And they use physics engines from engine from Unity to do that. And of course, Google Maps for, for the geometry of the city. And Google Maps, of course, working well with all the AR Plat uh, all the AR SDKs that we have recently uh, got. It's AR Core and AR Kit. So if you want to build something like Pokemon Go, uh, you can use AR Core that is also compatible with uh, iPhone, uh, iOS development for iOS and for Android. AR Kit is only available for iPhone. And there are several games, as I said, that are built now with this platform. It's uh, Walking Dead, Wizards Unite, and Ghostbusters, Bastards, uh, that are available on the Play Store you can download. You can try out uh, the platform. You can download the SDK and see how what you can make. Uh, unfortunately, currently, it's only New York that is available for the exploration before, uh, before, we, before the platform going into production. But already with this data, you can create amazing experiences and check out the APIs. And all the APIs should be working. If you have any questions, uh, please ask. Uh, you're also free to ask me on Twitter and anytime after the presentation.
Anyone? When you guys think uh, about their questions, uh, can I share this uh, contact, your contacts uh, in our internal uh, space? Yes, sure. Good. Uh, I had some questions, but unfortunately, I don't remember about them right now. Uh, hello, Christina. Uh, thank you for the demo. Hello. I want to ask one question. You said that only New York is available, but uh, the, de the demo you shown there was Paris and uh, Tokyo. So yes. uh, that game doesn't use that API or they have some, yes. I don't know, b bad access? So, uh, of course, so for the public, uh, only New York is available. Of course, uh, at the moment, there are all the cities can be accessed, but uh, it's only if you are, let's say, if you have an idea how to, what game you're gonna build, you can contact the sales uh, for Google Maps, uh, pitch your idea, and you might get the access to other cities as well. I hope it answers your question. Yes, thank you. But if you also want to kind of check out how it might look uh, at the moment at Google Maps, at normal uh, mobile app, you can enable 3D and check out how it looks. So I would uh, expect it would, if you consider, okay, how does it look in your city? Uh, maybe you can go to just Google Maps uh, app on your phone and check it out how it is in 3D. There is a special layer there that's called 3D now. We have to take into account that um, our cities are not so good uh, properly covered by Google Maps. We have some issues with that. Yeah, th th that's why I'm saying like to check out, you can check out already what Google Maps have in 3D in, in the app itself. Uh, yeah, but uh, what I know you will get the map like the without the buildings, that's for sure. And you can get the playable locations. Uh, the only concern, let's say for me, would be that if you get the 3D will be in good quality. Yeah. I had one comment uh, uh, during our one of our conferences. Uh, we heard a speech from developer uh, about uh, Chinese Chinese Google, Google Map and uh, uh, actually about working in in China. And mm -hmm. uh, we have to take into account that a lot of uh, services that are provided uh, globally doesn't work in China. So you, yes, have, yes. you have to take into account if you want to use uh, China style and uh, Chinese location in your game, you have to be careful with that yes. idea. Yes, that's, that's what I, I also during the presentation I said it, uh, the cover, they cover almost all the countries and of course there is uh, in the documentation there there is a list of countries where uh, the data might not be in best quality and also the countries where the data is not available like in china for, for instance so yes uh, uh, consult the documentation before you consider the game yes <laughs> 